and welcome to Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today's video is part of a series I do where I compare books with their movie adaptation. And before we get into the book and movie, I want to warn you that there will be spoilers for both, both the book and the movie. So if you plan on reading the book or watching the movie, you should do that first and then come back and watch this video. I also want to tell you that this is available as a podcast. I will link to Spotify and Apple down below because those are the two most popular platforms, but I am on other platforms as well. So these tend to be about 30 minutes, but especially if they're longer and it works better for you to listen to it, that is available. And I also want to say that even though my podcast is called Why the Book Wins, <laughs> I do love movies as well. And there are times where the movie wins when comparing book first movie. So it is not always the book because I do love movies. And oftentimes, you know, before I even started this podcast, the reason I would read a book was because I liked the movie. And so I wanted to read the book for it. And so I love both essentially. And I think I give a fair, you know, view of both book and movie, despite my name being why the book wins. <laughs> anyway, thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, let's get right into the book first movie. Hello, and thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and today we are here to talk about The Beguiled, which is a novel by Thomas Cullinan released in 1966. And then there are two movie adaptations, and I will be discussing both. The first one was released in 1971, directed by Don Siegel, and then the newer adaptation was released in 2017 and directed by Sofia Coppola. And this book was apparently originally published under the name of Painted Devil, but when I looked into that, like I was trying to find a physical copy with it under that name, but like you just can't find it. I'm assuming when the movie was released in 71, it started being reprinted under the name The Beguiled and they just stuck with that from there on out. But yeah, I couldn't find much with it under this other name, A Painted Devil. And it also, that seems like such a random title. The Beguiled is so much more fitting. But yeah, apparently at one point this was printed under the name A Painted Devil. But to give a brief overview of what this story is about, we have John McBurney, who is a Union soldier and he is fighting in the South when he is injured, his leg is injured, and he is found by a young girl named Amelia and she is attending the Farnsworth School for Girls, which is still open even though the war is going on, but there are these five students that have stayed there because for one reason or another, they just can't, they don't have a home to go back to. And so the two sisters who run the school have kept it open for these five students. So there are a total of seven females in this school, two teachers, five students. Anyway, Amelia brings him back here. And while he is nursed back to health, all of the women are just like affected by the presence of him. And he beguiles them with his lies and his flattery. And in turn, they, they also beguile him in a way as well. And so at one point he is found in bed with one of the girls named Alice. The girl who finds him in bed with her is named Edwina and Edwina had thought that John was in love with her because he said he was, <laughs> but turns out he was lying and being manipulative. Anyway, she's very jealous and she pushes him down the stairs, making his leg injury even worse. And the lady in charge of the school, Miss Martha, she decides they have no choice but to amputate his leg. When he awakens to see that he has a missing leg, he decides to get his revenge. So he just makes things uncomfortable for them and just continues to manipulate them. And then in the end, they have a birthday dinner for him and they serve him poisonous mushrooms on purpose. And this causes him to die. And then the school just returns to regular life, almost as if this never happened. And that's the beguiled for you. So for the book review, there are parts of this story, like as I was reading it, that reminded me of some kind of dating show, like The Bachelor or something, where it's one guy with all these women and all the women want to get with him. And he has his time alone with each woman where he tells them, you know, I love you and I feel this deep connection to you already. And they're making out even though they hardly know each other and hooking up and he gets to choose which one he gets because they're all interested in him. And so it did have that vibe going a lot of the time to some extent. And the premise also like, it does seem like the male fantasy, you know, aside from the fact that the guy dies in the end. But as far as like my thoughts on the writing, I did find it a bit anticlimactic because when big moments happened, it wasn't described in a way that really built the tension and the drama. Some scenes weren't even described specifically. It was like instead talked about after the fact. And Cullinan was a playwright, so this would explain why he wrote things in this way because this is a dialogue heavy book. And yeah, some scenes are just like mentioned, but not written in this detailed, tense way. But if he's a playwright, he wouldn't really need to write in that way because the actors would act it out in the tense way. And so as a playwright, that's not really, you don't really have to do that. So that does explain why maybe those parts of the book weren't as well done. And then throughout the course of this novel, we also learn different secrets about the woman and the girls. And most of them were just, again, anticlimactic where it's like, really? Like that's 
what she's trying to keep people from finding out or something. And I just wish it was juicier drama and secrets. Having said that, I did love the premise of this. This episode is one I was really excited to record, which kind of surprised me how excited I was to record it because of the fact that I gave the book like three and a half stars, which isn't bad, but it's not great. And the movies we'll get into, they're not, they weren't like five star movies, but maybe when all is said and done, I would raise my ratings though, because this is one that I have thought about and it stuck with me and I'm excited to talk about it. So maybe I should give it a higher rating than I actually did. But yeah, I love the premise of this story and certain aspects of it. I really loved, like it had a lot of promise and I just wish he would have elaborated more on certain things. And to get into the movies, I am going to be talking about all of these like interwoven. I'm not gonna split up the 71 movie and then the 17 movie. I'm just gonna talk about them all mixed in together. But so for the 1971 movie review, I was actually more excited to watch the 2017 movie and I had really high hopes for that one. However, I decided to do this chronologically and watch the 71 movie first. And this is directed by Don Siegel, which you might have recognized that name because he is a very famous director from the 70s. He directed a lot of movies with Clint Eastwood, which Clint Eastwood plays John McBurney. Their most famous collaboration was Dirty Harry. So this one is definitely a bit different than their normal thing. And yeah, in this movie, there were some interesting camera zooms and shots that did remind me of some other movies from that time. Maybe ones that had been directed by him, but I just didn't realize it. And there are some, one weird scene in particular that we'll get into, but for the most part, I was actually impressed and I was surprised how much I really liked this adaptation. The performances were fantastic. And as you're watching this, you just feel the unease as all the characters try to like seduce and betray and get revenge on one another. And I just thought great performances and just a wonderful vibe throughout the film that I wanted from a story like this. Unfortunately, this did not do well in the box office at the time. Like I said, Clint Eastwood and Don Siegel were known for doing more action movies. And so this was marketed as an action movie when really it's more of like a psychological thriller. And so it did not do well because when people went to see it, it was not what they were wanting. <laughs> and so, yeah, it didn't do well at the time, but I think it has gained more fame as the years go on. And there is a scene where we, that we will be talking about that is pretty iconic. And then the 2017 movie, like I said, I had high hopes for this one. And it's funny because Sofia Coppola said that this wasn't so much a remake as it was an adaptation of the book. And Guillermo del Toro said the same thing about Nightmare Alley, where he was like, you know, this isn't a remake. I'm basing this off of the original text. And yet in both cases, both movies took so much from the original movies. So them saying it wasn't a remake isn't really true because this movie and Nightmare Alley took so much from the original movie. I will say I love Nightmare Alley, so I don't mean that as an insult. I was just surprised how similar it was to the original movie while also including a lot from the book. But as far as The Beguiled goes, I was disappointed how similar it was to the original movie rather than Coppola really making it her own and making bigger changes and staying true to the book in ways that the original movie hadn't. But I get when you're remaking a movie that is adapted from a book, most viewers have not read the book, but they probably have seen the original movie. So you want to keep some of those scenes as like, you know, to pay tribute to the original movie. But still, I wish she would have stuck closer to the book. And the scenes she did add from the book that weren't in the original movie were just like so random, <laughs> like, kind of meaningless scenes, not meaningless, but she could have chosen better scenes to add rather than the ones she did, if that makes sense. I will say though, this movie is beautifully shot, like just amazing shots, which I will be showing in the video and fantastic costumes. And it is very atmospheric, but it lacked the unease and the tension that should have been felt in this story and that we had in the original book, in the, in the movie and in the book too. But I think the 71 movie did a really good job at creating this unease. And whereas this one, it just, I wasn't feeling as uncomfortable as I wanted to feel basically. And it also is only 90 minutes long and I feel like it could have benefited from being a bit longer. So I, it just felt rushed. And so to get into the differences, I'm going to start with talking about John McBurney. So in the book, McBurney uses a lot of false flattery with these women telling each of them how he can relate to them specifically and like, oh, you know, you're like me, like we don't fit in here and people don't understand us. And you know, you and me against the world kind of talk and each of them falls for it. And also like he tells, 
He tells Edwina that he's in love with her. I don't know if he says he loves any of the others, but he definitely makes it seem like, wow, like we have a connection and I really like you. And then Edwina, he claims he has fallen in love with her. And we also have him quoting Shakespeare to one woman because he knows that she's into Shakespeare and she would be impressed. But then later when he is asked to requote it again, he's unable to. So he just memorized it for that specific moment as a way to manipulate her. But then later he's like, oh, like he isn't able to remember. So she catches him in the lie. But yeah, he's just really good at, you know, using that false flattery to get to each one in their specific individual ways. And the book just had so many scenes where he beguiles them. I'm gonna be saying that word a lot. <laughs> But yeah, he beguiles each one, telling each woman and girl what she wants to hear and just not being genuine with any of them. The 1971 movie does a great job showing this. Clint Eastwood, like he he was great in this movie, but there's parts, multiple scenes where he is talking to Miss Martha, telling her something and what he's telling her while he's telling her something, we see, we get like flashbacks to what the truth is. And the truth is the exact opposite of what he's telling her. And like, for example, he says he was injured because he was like a medic and how he's against violence. And so he never had a gun in the war. He was just there to help other people. And then he got injured. But of course, when we get the flashback, we see him with a gun shooting people. And then another part where he's talking about like, it's so terrible what this war is doing to the earth. And, you know, we need to take care of mother earth and all this stuff. Meanwhile, we see the past and how he is lighting fire to just the earth and not appreciating it at all the way he's claiming. So I thought that was very well done. And in general, he just is very much like the book where he is telling each woman what she wants to hear. And he is just being very convincing and very manipulative. With the 2017 movie, I am not sure what Sofia Coppola was going for with McBurney. I don't know if she wanted to make him less beguiling, which kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> but and yeah, I don't know if it was Colin Farrell who plays McBurney or if it was her direction for him was off, I don't know, but he just was not, he didn't come across like as manipulative as he did in the book and in the 71 movie. He seemed more genuine. Like with Edwina, it seemed like he actually was interested in her. Like his lines are still pretty cheesy and he does end up going with Alice instead. So obviously he's not, you know, a saint in this version, but I did wish we got more of his relationship with Edwina, sorry, with Alice. Like we see her kiss him, but I don't know. I feel like there should have been more showing him being interested in her because in the book, yeah, he and Alice are flirting all the time when nobody's around. And we, yeah, we get that in the 17 movie, but we get it even more so in the 71 movie. And so, yeah, the 2017 movie just didn't convey enough how manipulative and like what a trickster he was. But I will say random side note in the book, McBurney is an Irish Catholic, whereas in the 71 movie, it's Clint Eastwood. So he's an American. But again, in this 2017 movie, Colin Farrell is Irish. So once again, similar to the book, he is an Irish Catholic and Thomas Cullinan himself was an Irish Catholic. So I don't know, like some authors will have like a self insert and I don't think he considered himself similar to McBurney because he's not a great character but we will be talking more about his character later in one specific aspect of it. Yeah, I don't know if Thomas Cullinan just put part of himself in McBurney, but not necessarily a reflection of who Cullinan was. Anyway, I did wanna share a quote from the book that talks about McBurney. It was hard to dislike him. He had such an open, friendly look about him that even when you knew for a positive fact that there was guile behind his innocence, it was difficult to think of it as anything but a boyish trick. And the guile was there, no doubt about it. Whatever Corporal John McBurney said, you had to ask, ask yourself, is this the way Corporal McBurney really feels? Or is this the way he wants you to think he feels? Or is he even more clever than you suppose and is allowing the edges of the trick to show, hoping that when you see it, it will make you feel superior to him in cleverness. And you're really not, or at least he thinks you're not, because what he really wants is your misjudgment of him. And again, that just did not come through in Colin Farrell, even though I love Colin Farrell, he's a great actor. So since I talked about Alice, I will move on to her character. So in the book, when he goes to Alice's room, we hear about that experience through Edwina's perspective. So we do not know like what his reasoning was as far as that goes, because in the 71 movie, he goes upstairs and he is like debating what room to go in. And then he notices that Alice is standing behind him. So then he just goes with her. So we don't know if that was the case in the book or if he was planning on seeing her all along. But in the 71 movie, Alice comes across as much more crazy, I guess. Like it's a trope I don't love where it's like, oh, like she's super sexy, but she's crazy. And so 
you want to do what she wants because you don't know how she'll react because she's so jealous, but then she's also so hot. And I don't like that trope, but that is the way Alice is in the 71 movie. Like when she sees him kissing Edwina, there's this whole thing with like, if you try tie a blue rag to the front gate, it means you have a union soldier that they'll come take away. That wasn't in the book though. But when she sees Edwina kissing him, she goes and she ties the blue rag on the gate and he realizes it was her and that he got really close to being caught. And so that's her, to way, her way of being like, you know, you better do what I want because otherwise I'm gonna get my revenge because I'm super jealous. Whereas that wasn't in the book or the new movie. But in the 2017 movie, it is like the book where we see it from Edwina's perspective. She's getting ready, brushing her hair, putting on a nice nightgown because she thinks McBurney will be coming into her room. And then she hears something, she looks in Alice's room and she sees the two of them together. But yeah, Alice just, in the 2017 movie, she also didn't come across as seductive as she was in the book or the 71 movie. Like I said, she was very seductive in the 71 movie. Elle Fanning plays Alice and she was good and we saw how she was interested in him, but I feel like that could have been played up even more. And in the book, after his amputation, Alice feels really bad for him as she talks to him. And this is shown in the 71 movie as well, where she is like, you know, I still love you and I'll still be with you because you can miss a leg, but you can still be with a woman. So I still want to run away with you ultimately. But McBurney is just upset. <laughs> and this is not in the 71 movie, but it is in the book and in the 17 movie, where he like hurts Alice physically, like he'll pull, pull her hair super hard or he'll like pinch her really hard. And so he'll do that because he's upset, of course. And so he's like, you know, I want you to get me the keys that Miss Martha has that are, you know, unlock this house and get to the wine cellar. So I guess I should be more specific because in the book, he wants the keys so that he can access the wine cellar primarily. But he also makes it seem like he is going to try to pit the woman against each other by thinking someone else has stolen the keys but then it doesn't really play out that way, but it also gives him control of the house and Miss Martha has locked a gun in like this drawer and if he has the keys, he can get the gun. Whereas in the 17 movie, he just wants the keys because they are locking the room he is in. So he just needs the key so he can get out of the room. And then in the 71 movie, he does not ask Alice for the keys. He just goes and gets it himself. And he wants it to, I guess, access the wine cellar and have control of the home, similar to the book. Uh, I hope that wasn't <laughs> too confusing, but so some changes there, but in the book and in the 2017 movie, he manipulates Alice and is mean to her to get her to help him get his revenge. But also in the 71 movie, when McBurney takes the keys, he also takes some letters and a locket that belonged to Miss Martha. Whereas in the book, Alice gets the keys and then she also takes the locket for some reason. And then Edwina is there as well and Edwina takes some money. And so all of these things are stolen from Myth Miss Martha. And moving on to Edwina. So there are a lot of differences with her character. The 17, 2017 movie decided to base Edwina more on the 1971 movie Edwina, more so than the book Edwina. And so that was one big change I did not like in the Coppola movie was I was hoping she would be more accurate to the book as far as Edwina goes and as far as Harriet goes, who we will be getting to. But anyway, in the book, Edwina is part black, probably like a quarter black, it sounds like. And so that's a big part of her character where she is really like defensive and she doesn't trust people because she's worried they will find this out about her and then not like her and like blackmail her or something. And the way this is written in the book is obviously pretty problematic where she hates that she's part black and it's something she wants to keep a secret. But then it's also taking place in the 1800s during the Civil War and she lives in the South. And so it kind of makes sense that she would want to keep that a secret. So yeah, it is a bit tricky as far as like adapting a character and keeping her biracial while not making it being offensive. Cause in the book it was written like the, something to be ashamed of basically. So that was uncomfortable to read. Anyway, in the book, she is not a teacher. She is one of the students. She is one of the older ones though. She's like 17 or 18, I guess probably 17. And in the book, she's described as being the most beautiful woman there. And so McBurney instantly is interested in her because she is so beautiful, but he also overhears that she is biracial. And so he is interested in her for that reason as well. And he convinces Edwina that he loves her. His leg is healing. And so Miss Martha, Miss Martha wants him to leave basically. And so because it is close for him to be leaving and because he had, has made these promises to Edwina, she assumes that he will come to her room that night. However, you know, he doesn't and she sees her, she sees him with Alice. And so then she pushes him down the stairs and then she's just up in her room the whole rest of the time for a while. So she doesn't even know the amputation 
conversation takes place. And honestly, in the book, after she pushes him down the stairs, she's not really in too much more. And she's not like a prominent character after that. I'm sure she talks to him after the amputation, but I don't specifically remember <laughs> what their conversation was. So I guess it wasn't anything too meaningful. But in the 1971 movie, Edwina is white and she is a teacher and she is also not attractive. And she is just, which I don't want to insult the actress. It's not like the actress wasn't attractive, but she's not made out to be this beautiful woman that she was in the book. But in the 71 movie, she's just kind of waify and is known to be a virgin and just very innocent. However, we do learn that she doesn't trust men because her dad apparently cheated on her mom a lot, it sounds like. And so because of that, she, however, McBurney wins her over and she believes his lies. And so once again, when she sees him with Alice, she is upset and she pushes him. And then she is there when the amputation happens. And then later when McBurney is being difficult and when he's like just harassing the woman of the house, basically, he like storms off and goes into the foyer study area he's in and she follows him and she gives herself to him. And because she does this, it softens him being like, wow, like she still loves me even after, um, you know, my leg is amputated. And so it kind of softens him. And then when they show up at dinner later that evening, McBurney seems like he's being more genuine and he really does feel bad for the way he's been acting. And the 17 movie is, the stuff with Edwina is like exactly the same as the 71 movie. So again, she's a teacher and she's not like, we don't have the drama or we don't have the history with her dad. So there's none of that. And she doesn't come across quite as innocent and naive as she had in the earlier film. But overall, it's very similar. The movie, the 2017 movie does add like a bit more conversations between them that had come from the book. But again, I was just like, out of all the things you could have added from the book that the original movie didn't have, why did you choose these random conversations between Edwina and McBurney? And honestly, again, like it made McBurney seem more genuinely interested in her. Whereas in the 71 movie, I will say that he kind of like switches really quickly where you could tell before he wasn't interested in her. He was just using her. But then in the end, suddenly he's like, wow, actually I am in love with her, I guess. Whereas in the 17 movie, you felt a, you felt he was being more genuine throughout in regards to Edwina. So it wasn't like this random switch that happens once she has sex with him. But on to the famous scene with his leg. So there are some things in this story that I just couldn't help but compare to Misery by Stephen King. You know, an injured man is taken in by a woman or a woman and at some point his leg is cut off or a part of his you know body in misery it's his foot but Stephen King is of course the king of horror and the way he describes that scene is incredible as I read this book and I've read it twice and both times that scene like I am on the edge of my seat and I am so tense and the pain is described so vividly as well as just the shock of it all and we just do not get anything like that anything close to that in the beguiled the book like I said in the book the scene isn't even really described like we get this lengthy scene leading up to it where she is reading the anatomy book and they're talking about where the bones are and where the arteries are and above the knee, below the knee, and that goes on for a while. But then once she gets down to it, we cut to the future and it's Ma Miss Martha is looking back on it. And that part was interesting as she reflects about how she felt about it. Like we do get some details, but in general, I just wish we would have would have been told about it more in the moment. Specifically, she talks about how McBurney woke up at some point and they had to give him more wine to put him back to sleep. And that would have been great. That would have been a great scene to actually read in the moment. It would have been so dramatic and exciting and tense. And yet she's just like, oh yeah, and that happened too, anyway. <laughs> like what? Like give us the details. Come on, that could have been so interesting. And then in the 71 movie, we actually do get the scene though, for the most part. So. We have it where she's looking at the anatomy book again and they're discussing that so they keep that the same and then also in book and movie she asks for his face to be to be covered or to be turned because she doesn't she wants to like disassociate from him kind of while she's doing it and then from there we see it happen through the faces of the characters as well as this cool shot where we like see her reflection in the mirror but it's like not graphic so i thought it was really well done because it's not graphic at all and yet it's very tense even without being graphic so i thought that was really well done and then of course the scene where McBurney wakes up and he, I forget who sees him, like Amelia or someone. And he asks for them to go get Miss Martha and she comes in and he's like, hey, my leg is really hurting. Can you fix the, can you fix the splints? And she's like, uh, you don't have any splints. <laughs> and so he's like, well, how can you fix a broken leg if I don't have any splints? And that is when it is revealed that he has no leg. And that scene is of course so iconic. That's the scene, that's the only scene from this movie that I had remembered seeing before. And it is so tense and Clint Eastwood is fantastic right there. So 
just overall that whole scene is so well done in the 71 movie. Moving on to this scene in the 19, sorry, in the 2017 movie, like we get even less than we did in the book. Like he falls down the stairs, they bring him in the kitchen. Miss Martha, who is played by Nicole Kidman is like, get me the anatomy book. And then that's it. <laughs> So I was just so disappointed. Like also, by the way, this movie is rated R, but it definitely could have been PG-13 because there wasn't like any R rated content that I could see. But anyway, I was so upset that they didn't do more with this scene. Like, and like, I, again, with the 71 movie, you don't have to be graphic. You can make it tense while not being gruesome, you know? And so I was just so disappointed <laughs> that they just skimmed over that and didn't show it at all. And even the next day when uh, McBurney sees his leg, it just like Colin Farrell was great in that scene. He was good. It just didn't pack the punch that the 71 movie did. And we do hear him though later on, like it's a shot outside of the house and we can hear him screaming and yelling in pain and in anger and moving and crashing stuff in the room. So it wasn't terribly done, but I guess just skipping the surgery entirely, I think was a huge mistake. But there's another scene I wanted to talk about while we're talking about Colin Farrell is when he is locked in that room, which in the other movies or in the other movie, I don't think he was locked in that room. But anyway, they don't trust him because he's so angry. So they've locked him in there and he convinces one of the girls to come in the room and unlock it. And so she comes in there and he is like so desperate. And he's like, please like convince them that they can be safe around me. Let's get it back to how it was before. It doesn't have to be like this. And he is just like so crazed and desperate. And I thought he was great in that scene, which was not in the book or the original movie. But one other change I wanted to talk about with this is in both movies, after he is pushed down the stairs, that night is when they do the amputation, which doesn't seem smart. <laughs> like you're woken up in the middle of the night and you're gonna perform a surgery now. Whereas in the book, so they do the best they can with his leg that night. They go to bed, they wake up the next morning. It's still not looking good. And McBurney is drinking because they're giving him a lot of wine to help with the pain. And so he is drunk and she says something about how they're gonna have to remove the leg. And he drunkenly is like, yeah, go ahead. And so Miss Mar Miss Martha thinks that, you know, that's his consent, so it's okay. Even though everyone else in the house is like, I mean, that doesn't count as consent. He was totally drunk. You can't just do it now because he drunkenly said he was okay with it. But it made more sense there where, you know, it wasn't this instant decision. She took her time deciding about it. And to talk about Miss Martha. So in the 1971 movie, McBurney and Martha kiss and she is very interested in him. And then the night he is, goes to Alice's room. Actually, so they had been locking his room, I forgot. So he was locked down in that study, but that night they kiss and then she removes the key. And so she's like, hey, like you're free to go wherever you want tonight, hint, hint, hint. But then of course he ends up going in Alice's room instead. And so then when he wakes up the next day and his leg is gone, he believes that Miss Martha did it because she was jealous because he didn't choose her room. Which by the way, this scene, like before he chooses what room to go to, we have this dream sequence that Miss Martha is having involving McBurney and it was just a really weird scene and I totally could have done without it and it ends with Miss Martha Edwina and McBurney like recreating this painting that she had had in her room and yeah it was just a weird scene so like five I don't know if it was like two minutes or five minutes of the movie that I could have done without but in the book Miss Martha never has like a romantic interest in McBurney and in the 2017 movie she there's a moment where like they almost kiss but then they never actually do so they definitely make her more interested in him in the 71 movie than she was in the book or the newer movie. But in the 71 movie and the book, we discover that she had had a romantic relationship with her brother and McBurney finds this out in the movie when he reads some letters. In the book, McBurney finds this out because when he is, they think he is passed out and unconscious, but really he is awake. But his, her sister Harriet tells McBurney this when she thinks he is passed out. So that is how he finds out. And so even though this is the same in both 71 movie and the book. The circumstances are a little different because in the 71 movie, it's shown that she and the brother like are both fine with it. And it's like a consensual thing. Whereas in the book, we see that she was actually really manipulative and she made the brother do things he didn't want to. And like after a night of them being together, Miss Martha would just be totally normal. Whereas the brother would stay in his room for days and not want to come out. And in the book, he has disappeared and it's rumored that he's dead and Miss Martha claims he has died. But Harriet believes that he just ran away and made it so Martha could not find him anymore. Whereas in 
the 71 movie, I guess he did officially die in some way. In the 2017 movie, this whole storyline is left out entirely. We do have a scene where McBurney asks Martha if she had a loved one or like a loved love interest before the war. And she says, yes, but we leave it at that. And then another thing with Miss Martha is when Alice takes the key, she finds a wig in Miss Martha's drawer and she realizes that Miss Martha actually has no hair and she wears a wig. And so this is like, she tells McBurney this and McBurney kind of uses it against her and will like taunt her in a way. But again, that was a secret, like it's a secret that's revealed, but it was kind of a disappointing one that's like not that interesting. And I just mentioned Harriet, because Harriet tells McBurney about Martha and the brother. And if you have not read the book, you're probably wondering who Harriet is, because both movies left her out. And again, this is one thing where for the 2017 movie, I thought they would be faithful to the book by including Harriet, because Harriet is the co-teacher and co-owner of the school. She and Martha are sisters. As I said, in the book, Edwina is a student, but there are two teachers and it is Harriet and Martha. And Harriet is actually an alcoholic. And so that is why Martha keeps the keys on hers because she doesn't want Harriet accessing the wine cellar. And in the book, McBurney and Martha never have like romantic conversations, interactions. Whereas in the book, he has those with Harriet instead. So he definitely tries to tell her what she wants to hear. And he, she's the one he is quoting Shakespeare to. And he even like sneaks in a kiss at one point and she's like startled by it. But then later in the story, she has a clearer head. And so when he's telling her these lies, she like catches him in the lie and calls him out on it. And then from there, like he grabs her neck and then she passes out. But then there's like different stories because this book switches between perspectives. And so there's different thoughts on whether or not he was actually trying to hurt her. But yeah, by the way, this book is told from the perspectives of the different females in the house. So we don't get McBurney's perspective, only the woman and the girls. But anyway, at some point after this, I don't know if it was the same night, but they, two girls, I forget which two, hear something down in the parlor where McBurney is staying and they go down there and they open the door and they see McBurney with Harriet, but McBurney is like crying and upset and is telling her to stop. But Harriet is like in this drunken stupor not even aware where she is, it seems. And then Miss Martha comes and like drags her away. And speaking of characters that are not in the 2017 movie, we have Maddie. So. Her name is Maddie in the book, but in the 71 movie, her name is Holly, but she is a black woman who had been a slave for the Farnsworth school. And so she's their cook and everything. But in the 17 movie, when Sofia Coppola was asked about why she did not include this character, she said that, you know, slavery is such an important topic that she didn't want to treat it lightly. And she felt like she should focus on these women who are so cut off from the world. And she didn't want to brush over such an important topic in a light way and that young girls watch my films and this was not the depiction of an African-American character I would want to show them. Whereas in the 1971 movie, they do have this character, but like I said, her name is Holly. And in the book, Maddie never really trusts McBurney. However, in the movie, like she is kind of beguiled by him just as much as the other women are. However, there is a point, you know, when McBurney is just like being drunk and unruly, and this is when things have gotten bad with his leg and everything. And then he threatens to attack Holly. And so that's the moment where like their relationship, their friendship is just totally ruined because in the book and in the 1971 movie, all of the characters kind of have a moment where they just lose it with McBurney in one way or another, hence the reason why they are okay with poisoning him later on. And so this is Holly's moment. And that makes more sense that that would like push her over the edge in the movie. Whereas in the book, like the moment where she is like pushed over the edge, so to speak, is when McBurney approaches her and he asks like, are you Edwina's mom? And if you're not, then is Edwina like somehow connected to the Farnsworth? Like, is she the daughter of their brother? Like, what's the story there? And for some reason this, like his questions really bother Maddie. And so that's when she's like, you know what, I've had it with you. So I don't understand why <laughs> that specifically got to her, but anyway, that's what it was in the book. And so the way McBurney acts after the amputation, like for starters, he recovers very quickly, which seems unrealistic in the book, especially because they did not have painkillers. In the 71 movie, they talk about giving him laudanum, but in the book, it's just wine. I, yeah, so it seemed unrealistic that one, he would recover so quickly and two, like, wouldn't he be in pain for a long time, right? He gets back to his regular self pretty soon and starts to plan his revenge. And the best he can think of is to just get Martha's keys and drink the wine and walk around the house just being an unwelcome guest <laughs> in their home and making people uncomfortable. And that's all he does. Like I was wanting something more, but that was it. 
And in both movies, there isn't much time between his leg and the mushrooms. And so it's really like just a few days, it seems, maybe a bit more. But yeah, so to, for those few days, he's just drunk and brandishing his gun and being mean. And it doesn't take long before they're like, we got to do something about this. And yeah, like he makes them feel all on edge and he has these secrets about all of them he could use and reveal. And so that's part of the tension. But again, I was just disappointed and it felt kind of anticlimactic. Like this is his revenge. Like couldn't, isn't there something more sneaky or something he could have done? But I wanna talk about Amelia because Amelia is a very important character. She is the one that finds McBurney in the woods. And she was probably my favorite character from the book. Like she was the most honest of all of them. And she truly just like wanted to be McBurney's friend and she valued his friendship. And I also just loved how much she loved being outside. <laughs> and she loved watching insects and creatures and picking up bugs to feed to her turtle. So I just thought she was a really sweet, fun character. However, she does keep her turtle in a box, which that seems kind of mean to keep him confined to a box. But anyway, so I did like Amelia's character in the book. In the 71 movie, so <laughs> Amelia finds him and then as they are like hiding, they see soldiers come by. So then they go and hide. And I guess to keep her from saying anything, he kisses her. Like originally in the script, I think he was supposed to cover her face with his hand, but then the director told Clint Eastwood like to kiss her, but they didn't tell the actress he was going to do that. And the actress was only 11 years old. So not only did Clint Eastwood, who was in his forties, kiss an 11 year old girl, and obviously it was just like a peck, but it lasted a few seconds. But anyway, so not only did he do that, which is really cringy and gross, but they also didn't tell the actress that that was what was going to happen because Don Siegel said he wanted her real shocked reaction and so the, re the reaction you see from her in the film is her real reaction. So they only did one take, thankfully, but that was just weird and gross on so many levels. And from there on in the movie, Amelia like thinks that McBurney is in love with her and truly loves her, which is like so childish to think that. And she is a child, but so she is very jealous of him that he is with these other women. And so that's part of the story. Whereas in the book, Amelia, she only wanted to be his friend. She wasn't interested in him romantically and she did not care what was going on between him and the other woman. And I loved how she said a few times about how she's only interested in the biology of insects and creatures and she has no interest in the human biology, meaning like their sexual relationships, I guess. So yeah, I love that about Amelia in the book and that was definitely changed in the 71 movie. Whereas in the 2017 movie, it's more, her character is similar to the book. So they kept her more faithful. But anyway, in the book, Miss Martha is wanting to get rid of McBurney. And so they hold this meeting, this court trying to decide what to do with him. And at first he is there joining, you know, as part of the decision-making because they're making it very official, but then at some point he gets upset and leaves. And so then they are saying how, like, so Marie is there, part of this court, and then she goes and sees Amelia and she tells Amelia, like, they're trying to figure out what to do with McBurning and things are getting bad. And so she and Amelia come up with this idea of like, what if we lie to McBurney and we tell him they're planning on killing him, even though they're not, we'll tell him that as a way to get him to agree to run away and we can take him and hide him out in the woods because Amelia has this area she hides out at that she loves and she thinks it's awesome. So she's like, I'll take McBurney there and keep him safe. So they tell McBurney this and he is very upset that they're planning to kill him even though they're not at this point, but they tell him they are, but then he is not interested in going into the woods and living there because Amelia sees it very romantically like this charming life in the woods but McBurney is an adult man and he's like, I don't want to live in a log watching animals. Like that is not what I want. And so he's just upset about it all. And while he is upset about this, Amelia, she gives him her turtle to be like, oh, here, Randolph will help you feel better. But he's upset and he just throws the turtle and it dies. Whereas in both movies, they are all in the kitchen and McBurney comes storming in and he's upset and he's scaring everybody. And in the 1971 movie, again, Amelia, she's like, here, McBurney, like Randolph will help you feel better. And he throws the turtle. Whereas in the 2017 movie, she does not hand him the turtle. She just is like, John, you're making Randolph upset. And then Colin Farrell goes over and dra <laughs> grabs the turtle and he throws it. But in all versions, regardless of how it is done, he kills the turtle, which is a big deal because Amelia had been his like number one supporter. And once he kills her turtle, she turns on him. So in the book, after this event happens upstairs with the turtle, Marie comes downstairs 
and the women are still all in the room discussing what to do. And Amelia, or sorry, Marie comes downstairs and she gives Miss Martha some mushrooms. And she's like, Amelia asked that you cook these mushrooms for Corporal McBurney tonight. And it's not said, but everyone can tell that <laughs> these, you know, are poisonous mushrooms. Whereas in the old movie, so the turtle falls or the turtle is thrown and then Amelia is holding it and then McBurney leaves and Mar Miss Martha is like, uh, Amelia, do you want to get some mushrooms for Corporal McBurney tonight? And Amelia says, yes, she will. Whereas in the new movie, they are all like huddled together and Marie is like, you know, what if we make a dinner for McBurney and Amelia can get some mushrooms for him? And then Miss Martha is like, Amelia, is that something you want to do? And Amelia says yes. And I want to say that in the book, these mushrooms are talked about so frequently. In the beginning of the book, Amelia finds him because she is looking for mushrooms, but the differentiating between poisonous mushrooms and edible mushrooms is talked about so much. So it was just so obvious that like I was a quarter of the way through the book and I was like, okay, clearly he's going to die by poisonous mushrooms because these are being brought up way too often. But anyway, so in the book, they tell McBurney that they're going to have a birthday dinner for him because by the way, this is his birthday, July 3rd, which we're pretty close to McBurney's birthday right now. Anyway, so they come down, make dinner for him and he is like having a good time and he is like, wow, this is so nice of you guys. I can't believe this. I've been acting so terribly. Now you're being so nice to me and this is awesome. And so they have this great dinner. He eats all the mushrooms and then they make him a cake and it's just this wonderful gathering. And then they all go to bed and then they wake up the next morning and they find his dead body. Whereas in the movies, so when they plan this whole thing with the mushrooms, Edwina is busy with Corporal McBurney. So she's not part of it. Whereas in the book, everybody, all the women knew what was going on. But anyway, so Corporal McBurney and Edwina show up at dinner and in the Clint Eastwood movie, they're at the dinner, he gets the mushrooms, he asks Edwina if she wants some, she says yes. And as soon as she takes a bite, Miss Martha yells out for her to not eat them. And so then we get this really tense moment, which by the way, also McBurney is saying how sorry he is and he wants to get Amelia a new turtle and he seems like he's really, turned a new leaf and is a better person. Anyway, he's already started eating the mushroom, so it's all too late. Anyhow, so then we have a tense scene where Edwina and Corporal McBurney are realizing what's going on and shows she spits out the mushroom. And then McBurney gets up and he's all dizzy and the room is spinning and then he falls and he dies. Whereas in the new movie, McBurney and Edwina show up. He's getting the mushrooms. He asks Edwina if she wants some. She says yes, but then one of the girls is like, Edwina, you don't like mushrooms. And she admits like, yeah, that's true, I don't. And so then McBurney just eats them all his, himself and then he starts suffocating and then he dies. <laughs> so the 2017 movie wasn't quite as dramatic as the 1971 movie. And even though the 71 movie was more dramatic with his death and I did like it, I also liked in the book how they just have this normal dinner and everything is fine. And then they just wake up to find that he died in the night. And then when he, after he dies in the book, they're like going through his pockets to prepare him to be buried and they find a letter his mother had written to him and then a letter he had started writing back to his mom as well as this like shopping magazine page that was ripped out and he had circled a doll that he was going to buy for Marie because earlier in the book he had promised to get her a birthday present and so these three things it humanizes him more and shows him as like a decent person basically it shows him that he wasn't it makes it seem like he wasn't as terrible as he had seemed and he wasn't as bad as these women thought he was and he therefore did not deserve to die because he wasn't as bad as they thought. And so it makes the women out to be much more the villains, especially with how heartless Miss Martha is in the end, being like, let's get back to class. And I don't like that in the book, how he did that, because I feel like Cullinan was trying to redeem John in that end moment, <laughs> showing these items he has on his person. And again, it just makes the woman seem more evil. And that was like a theme in this book. At one point, McBurney is talking about Macbeth and obviously Lady Macbeth is the evil character convincing Macbeth to do these bad things. And so McBurney goes on this thing about how women are just like inherently evil, basically. And so then this coming kind of comes full circle with the end when we see that McBurney actually wasn't a bad person necessarily. I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> and I feel like I could have done without that whole scene where he's talking about Lady Macbeth and I don't remember if he talked about Eve, but you know, like Eve is the one who convinces Adam to eat the apple. And so it's just in woman's nature to tempt men kind of a thing. So yeah, I don't know if that's how Colin actually thinks, but I didn't love that part in the book and I could have done without it. And both of the movies leave that out as well. 
But one thing the 2017 movie does talk about that was in the book that was not in the old movie that I really liked was this analogy of an insect invader, which Amelia talks about. And it is obviously very symbolic of Corporal McBurney invading their home. So I wanted to share it. Well, said Amelia thoughtfully, sometimes the invaders went out. I've seen a hunting wasp invade a nest of grasshoppers and kill or at least paralyze all of them with his stinger so that each of them could be hauled away at leisure to be eaten. On the other hand, Amelia went on, Quite often, the intruder doesn't win. I've seen a caterpillar invade a nest of tiny red ants and be charmed by them or diverted in some way until he was entirely at their mercy. The little ants seemed to be stroking the caterpillar with their feelers until he was quite relaxed, and after a while, he released a few drops of liquid from somewhere near his tail, and then all of the ants partake of this liquid, which they seemed to enjoy very much. Then, having milked him, they joined together to drag that helpless caterpillar underground, intending, I suppose, to use him for future feedings. And I know this has been a longer episode, but I wanted to, sh to share some random trivia before we close out. <laughs> so one thing, Sofia Coppola asked Kirsten Dunst to lose weight for this role, and Kirsten Dunst was just like, no, not gonna happen. <laughs> and she said that she doesn't like exercise, and she just got done dieting for some other movie, and she was like, not doing it. So I thought that was awesome. And then also Dunst said that she, which Kristen Dunst plays Edwina. And so she and Colin Farrell have like a very weird sex scene that seemed unnecessary. But anyway, Dunst said how she hates having to film sex scenes. And she said, it is a better experience when you have a woman director though, because men tend to want to do multiple takes from different angles, whereas Sofia Coppola was like, we're doing this three takes and then we're done. But Kristen, Kristen Dunst still said that she just hated doing the scene and honestly, I don't, like I said, I don't see why the scene was included. Uh, so yeah, I feel like we could have done without that. And then also Coppola won Best Director, the Best Director Award at the Cannes Film Festival that year for this movie, which I, I don't know who else was in the running that year, but I was kind of surprised by that. And then Colin Farrell said that it was amazing to be on this set and he is quoted as saying, to be surrounded by talented, decent, smart, insightful, creative, and serious women. I was spoiled by Sofia Coppola, who set a particular mood of comfort, ease, and trust. It allows you to be an actor to play and explore. And yeah, I thought that was really cool that this is a female director and it's such a female heavy cast and he really is like the only guy. There's like some other soldiers, but, but yeah, so I thought it was cool that he just loved being surrounded by these like he said, talented, decent, smart, insightful, and creative, serious woman. And then on a sad note, in the 1971 movie, Edwina is played by an actress named Olivia, or sorry, Elizabeth Hartman, and she struggled on and off with depression and she ended up committing suicide in 1987. And then also with the 71 movie, Joanne Harris plays Alice and she is wonderful in this role. Like I said, it is like a trope I don't love, but she does do it really well. And she and Eastwood were actually having an affair at this time, Eastwood was married, and apparently their affair lasted quite a while. And then also with the 71 movie, Universal Studios wanted Siegel to change the ending because they did not like that McBurney dies in the end. And they were like, "We, you can't kill Clint Eastwood. You gotta keep him alive in the end. But apparently Siegel really fought to keep the ending the way it was. And I'm really glad he did. So on to book first movies. So between the three, the one I keep coming back to is the 1971 movie. It has some things missing from the book, but overall I just thought it was a really faithful adaptation. And Eastwood just really conveys the dishonesty and the beguilement that just was not present in the 2017 film. And then Geraldine Page, by the way, who I haven't talked about, but she plays Miss Martha and she was wonderful. So just amazing cast, great ambiance throughout, the kind of ambiance you want. And again, the amputation scenes were so well done. The book was good, but like I said, it just, not enough details were given and it wasn't as tense and uncomfortable as I wanted it to be. And I feel bad <laughs> picking a movie over the book though, because I feel like that's been happening a lot. So I feel like I'm not staying true to my name of why the book wins. I guess I could say that the book and the 71 movie are tied. There are some things missing from the 71 movie from the book that I did like, but I still think the 71 film is a great adaptation. And yeah, I might just say that that movie wins. Maybe it's tied with the book, but yeah, that is the ad adaptation I would recommend. Like I said, with the 17 movie, it is beautifully shot. It is also really dark because they use like natural light. And in the 1800s, you just had candles. So at nighttime, it, they're very dark scenes, but it is a beautifully shot movie and the performances are good. It just, I don't, I, it seems like the way they were directed to perform didn't convey Specifically with McBurney, it just didn't convey how he was in the book. But anyway, I guess that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video or listening to this podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video and to comment your thoughts down below. And yeah, this has gone on for a while now, longer than usual, so I will just wrap this up. And again, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.